This is my cat. He is a chunk. He is on a diet. Hi, my name is Lee and I'm a veterinarian. Today I'm going to tell you a simple way to figure out how much you should be feeding your pets. The only two things you'll need to know before we start, how much your pet weighs and what food you're feeding them. But first, why is this important? Like, why do you care? Because the American Veterinary Medical Association, also known as the AVMA, estimates that about 35% of our pets are overweight. I mean, let's all admit it right now. Fat pets are really cute. There's more to love. Unfortunately, that extra weight is really bad for them. Obesity in pets has been linked to all sorts of diseases and even a shorter lifespan. How much shorter are we talking about? Listen to this because it's crazy. On average, obese pets live anywhere from six months to two years shorter than a pet that's at a healthy weight. That's like mind blowing. So let me tell you how much to feed your pets so we can keep them around forever. Okay, maybe not forever, but for as long as we can. You are going to feel so smart after this. The first thing we need to find out is, is your pet at an ideal weight? Take a look at these beautiful pictures. Officially, they're called body condition score charts. Unofficially, they're called chunk charts. As you can see, the top chart is for cats and the bottom is for dogs, but the guidelines are pretty similar. One difference about cats and dogs that you should know is that cats have a fat pad on their belly. That's important because even cats at a healthy weight can have a small fat pad. The scale goes from one to nine, with one being the skinniest and nine being the fattest. For pets that are a one, two, or three on the scale, so the thin part of the scale, you'll be able to see their ribs. Their hip bones and their spine will also be pretty prominent. Their stomach, where it meets their back legs, goes up really, really far. When you look at them from above, you'll see a really thin waist. If we're talking about a cat, they won't have a fat pad. If your pet is a one, two, or three on the scale, they're too thin and they need to gain weight. One thing I'm going to mention is if your pet has started to lose weight despite you not changing what you're feeding, or if they have decided to just not want to eat, you should definitely take a trip to your vet and get them checked out. There might be something going on medically that needs to be addressed and is causing these things to happen. Pets that are a four or five on the scale are at a perfect weight. The big marker for this is that you shouldn't be able to see their ribs, but you should be able to easily feel their ribs. A lot of people are surprised by that one. Also, their stomach still goes up a little bit towards the end, towards those back legs, but not at that extreme angle that we would see in a thin animal. When you look at them from above, they still have a little waist going on. A cat may or may not have a small fat pad. Reuben here is a good example of a cat that's at an ideal weight. I can feel his ribs pretty easily. He does have a tuck when he stands up. There we go, a little bit of a tuck there. And he does still have a little bit of a fat pad, but that's okay, because that's normal for him. Oh no, lip gloss, let me get that. If your pet is a five or a six on the scale, excellent job, like mwah, chef's kiss. Pets that are a six, seven, eight, or nine are overweight. You can feel their ribs with some difficulty or not at all. Their belly is a straight line or pudges out. When you look at them from above, they don't have a waist or they are actually a little bit round. A cat will have a large fat pad. Castiel here, he's a really good example of an overweight cat. <coughs> cat hair. I'd probably put him at like an eight. I can barely feel his ribs. You can see where his belly pudges out instead of tucking back up under. He's got no waist when I look at him from up above. And he does have a pretty significant little fat pad down here. I'm sorry, I'm picking on you. Cass is also a good reminder that if your pet is overweight, you don't have to feel ashamed or like you're a bad pet owner or whatever, because it happens. It's easy to lose control of that aspect of pet ownership. Like I'm a vet, it happened to me. I got really busy, I had a ludicrous schedule, I had to free feed my cats in order for them to eat. One of them got fat. It is what it is. Now that we're here though, it's important as a responsible pet owner to recognize what's happening and understand that it's a problem. That way we can take steps to fix it to keep our pets healthy so that they feel good and stick around for longer. So looking at the scale, if your pet is a six, seven, eight, or nine, they do need to lose weight. 
Now we know where your pet is on the chunk chart, so we know what direction we need to head in nutritionally. So how much do you need to feed in order to get to your goal? I'm going to use another one of my cats as an example. Say hello, Barbara. Good job. Okay, that was better. This video was actually an excuse just to show you all of my cats. Anyway, I'm going to be using Barbara as my example. Feel free to plug in information from your pets as we go along. Don't forget that you can always pause the video if you need to catch up on your end. Also, I'll put all the important stuff in the comments below. Oop, okay, bye! Well, we'll give her a break. Okay, let's get to it. Food is energy. In order to know how much food we should be feeding, we need to know how much energy your pet uses every day. There are two parts to this. The first part is how much energy your pet uses to do basic things to live. Things like breathing, digesting, thinking, keeping the heart beating, all the important but really simple stuff. This is known as the resting energy requirement. We can shorten it to RER. There is a simple formula that we're going to be using to figure out your pet's RER. Take your pet's weight. Barbara weighs 10 pounds. Right off the bat, we need to tweak something here. We actually need this number to be in kilograms, which is a different measurement of weight. Luckily, that's a really quick fix. All you have to do is divide by 2.2. So go ahead and do that with your pet's weight. Barbara weighs 10 pounds. Divided by 2.2, that's 4.5 kilograms. Next, we're going to multiply that weight in kilograms by 30. So 4.5 times 30 is 135. Last step, we add 70 to that number. 135 plus 70 is 205. That number is actually in calories. We just found out that Barbara burns 205 calories just to exist as a cat. But pets do more than just exist, right? They play, they run around, they do stuff. And that's where the second part comes in. We need to figure out how much energy our pets use on a daily basis. This is called the daily energy requirement, otherwise known as the DER. And this one's really easy because somebody already did all of the math for us, they calculated everything out, and they put it in a nice little chart for us to reference, which is just fantastic. Here it is. What are you looking at here? Well, cats and dogs need different things. So if you're calculating for a dog, stick to the left side of the screen. If you're calculating for a cat, stick to the right. Now look through the different options here. Pets need different amounts of energy for daily activities based on different things. You should choose one category that best fits your pet. I'll quickly go through them so you know which one to pick. One thing I need to mention in order to avoid confusion is that the word neutered can be used to describe both male and female pets. So, if you have a pet that was spayed, you can also say that she was neutered. In other words, if your pet has had a surgery to make it so they cannot have babies, they can be called neutered whether they're a boy or a girl. The word intact means that they have not been neutered. Based on the chunk chart, if your pet is at an ideal weight, choose either the neutered or intact adult categories, depending on if they've had that surgery. If your pet is an adult and at an ideal weight now, but has struggled with obesity in the past or has predisposing conditions for obesity like arthritis, choose the inactive or obese prone. If your pet is an adult and is overweight, you should be choosing the weight loss category. If your pet is an adult and is underweight, choose the weight gain category. If your animal is a working dog, such as a rescue dog or a herding dog, choose that category. For puppies and kittens, choose those categories based on age. Pretty self-explanatory. Once you find your category, look at the number beside it. We're going to multiply that number by the RER that you calculated a few minutes ago. Feel free to pause this if you need some more time, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean with my little example here. Since Barbara is an adult and an ideal weight and has been spayed, I'm going to be using the neutered adult cat number, which is 1.2. 1.2 times her RER, which was 205 calories, is 246, and that's her DER. That's how many calories Barbara needs to eat per day in order to both exist and do her cat things. Now, <laughs> depending on the size of your pet, you might be looking at that number and be thinking, that is not enough, that is way, way too small. Check your math, make sure nothing went wrong, but more than likely, you're thinking of it in human terms. You can't help it, 
I can't help it, we all do it. We all project our human emotions and human things onto our pets. But try to take a step back and remember realistically how much smaller your pet is in comparison to a human. Sometimes it's difficult to do, I totally get it, but we have to do it in order to do what's best for our pets. Okay, we've done the hardest part. Now how do we translate this number to food? Actually, the same way we do in people. You look on the back of the food package. Every pet food should have the nutritional information somewhere on the package. If you don't have the bag in front of you, you can just look it up online. Find where it says the calorie content. It should tell you how many kcals there are in a cup. A kcal is the same thing as a calorie, so don't get confused there. I don't know why there are two different names for it. P.S. If you are doing a home cooked diet, you can still do all of this, but you're going to have to figure out how many calories are in each ingredient that you're using and add them all up and calculate it from there. For Barbara, I feed her Royal Canin dry cat food and I use the hairball control version. When I look at the nutritional information, it says there are 338 kilocalories per cup. We need to figure out how many cups of this food Barbara needs to eat per day in order to get her DER, which we found out was 246 calories. All we have to do is take the daily energy requirement that we just finished calculating and divide it by the amount of calories in one cup of the food. Then we multiply that number by 100 in order to get percentage. By finding the percentage, we find out how much of a cup we should be feeding. If we get 25% of a cup, then we need to be feeding a quarter of a cup. 50% is half of a cup. 75% is 3 quarters of a cup, 100% is 1 cup. For the higher numbers, let's say we get 125%, that's 1 cup and 1 quarter of a cup. 150 is 1 cup and a half, 175 is 1 cup and 3 quarters, and then 200% is 2 cups, and you can go up from there. Barbara's DER was 246. When we divide that by how many calories are in a cup of her food, which is 338, we get 0.72. Multiply that by 100 and that's 72%, or close to 3 quarters of a cup. You can round up or down to make it easier for you and to make it more realistic for portioning out. Big thing to remember is that this is per 24 hours, not per feeding. So for example, if I were to feed Barbara twice a day, I'd have to divide that number by two in order to figure out how much she needs per meal. If you divide her 72% by two, you get 36%, or a little over a third of a cup. So she would get a third of a cup at each meal if I fed her twice a day. That was some big brain energy. I don't know why I did that to myself because I calculated all of this before I started filming. You're the one doing the math right now. So, um, big brain energy. That felt better. That felt right. Okay, what about treats? Well, the daily energy requirement that you calculated includes all of the calories that your pets need on a daily basis. That includes their wet food, their dry food, any treats, vegetables, supplements, you name it. Anything that they consume is included in that calorie count. If you're giving any of these things, you need to find out how many calories are in them and then subtract that from the main meal. You might be thinking, I don't really think that that would contribute too much. There doesn't seem to be that many calories in the treats. They're not that big. I'm really, really sorry because I'm about to burst your bubble. Failure to subtract how many calories are in treats, that's one of the main reasons why diets and our pets fail. Without doing that, it's hard to know or realize how much you're feeding your pet. Let's um, be best friends real quick and I will tell you a quick story. So I had a client, I'm not going to use her real name, her name let's say was Shannon and she had a beagle, a really really overweight beagle, we'll call him Rusty. Shannon's been in denial about Rusty's weight for years, but recently he's had trouble walking just because he's so big. So she comes to terms with it and together we make a plan to help Rusty out. I talk to her about all the stuff that I'm telling you about and one thing I recommend for her is to stop feeding those really high calorie pet treats and instead switch over to green beans. Green beans are lower in calories and that way Rusty still gets little snacks throughout the day and she gets to feed him snacks. I told her that she does need to subtract those green bean calories from his main meal just to make sure that we're not going overboard. A few weeks later Shannon calls and is 
very upset <laughs> because Rusty isn't losing weight. If anything, he's gained weight. After further investigation, I find out that Shannon has been feeding an entire bag of frozen green beans in addition to Rusty's meal. And I'm like, Shannon, of course Rusty isn't losing any weight because we're feeding him his entire daily energy requirement in green beans plus his meals. Taking a step back, it sounds ridiculous to me, but to Shannon, it was completely reasonable because she was feeding a healthy snack. She had completely forgotten to account for how many calories she was actually feeding. Anyway, the story has a good ending. I explained some things, Shannon and I laughed about it. We fixed the problem and now Rusty is losing weight. So, woo! Moral of the story, don't be like Shannon before the great green bean fiasco of 2020. Be like Shannon after the great green bean fiasco of 2020. To show you how to subtract the treats at home, I'll do Barbara's as an example. I feed her Greenies hairball control treats, and if you look on the back of the package, it says there are 1.24 calories per treat. If I feed her 10 treats a day, that's 12.4 calories. So I need to subtract that from her daily energy requirement, which was 246. 246 minus 12.4, that's 234. So I would have 234 calories left to feed her in meals. That's it. You have all of the knowledge at your fingertips. I mean, you were pretty great before, but now you're unstoppable. Little reminder, if you're trying to get your pet to gain or lose weight, you need to weigh them on a fairly regular basis just to make sure that your plan is working and also to adjust how much you're feeding as their weight changes. The most accurate way to do this is to buy a baby scale. You can get a pretty good one anywhere from $30 to $40 on Amazon. If you want to save some money, you can just pick up your pet and step on the human scale and then subtract whatever that is from your weight. It works, but it is a lot less accurate. I probably weigh them every one to two weeks and don't forget to record your weight so you can notice any trends. One thing I do need to mention is that these are standard guidelines and they work for most pets. At the end of the day, a personalized consultation with your veterinarian is the best way to ensure that your pet is getting the right nutrition. It's also always a good idea to consult with your veterinarian before changing up the diet on your pet, especially if they have pre-existing conditions. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Now you have some real fun facts that you can use to impress your friends. If you learned something, give this video a like, subscribe for some more vet-related content, maybe some not vet-related content. I'm not really sure what the future holds because this channel is very, very, very early in the making. Either way, subscribe because it really helps out. Thanks. Please feel free to comment below with any questions and let me know if this video was helpful to you. Also, tell me what you want to see in the future. If you want to be friends, you can find me on Instagram at animaldrlee. I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye!